uh, just a quick hands-on of the MacBook Air um, next to the T14 Gen 2. So not exactly like for like price-wise nor size-wise, so why not? Please do like and subscribe, it um, helps us to keep this channel running. Right, um, if we get started immediately, it's um, a more metallic feel on the Mac. It's really refined, it's like really nice to have in the office. It's um, it's just nice. If you drop this laptop in the corner, it dents and possibly also dents your floor as well. A laptop carrying sleeve is usually a, a good idea. The ThinkPad, it's um, a mil-spec tested chassis. It's built for robustness. This is something that obviously don't drop it, um, but it's just, it's a lot more robust a chassis in the sense that um, it's passed the new spec tests etc. The ThinkPad people tend to love it and um, the Mac people tend to call it um, a break so it's um, somewhere in between. How do you open this? Right so one-handed opening let's see if it's um, sort of ish. It looks easier if we try to open it from the ridge on the middle it sort of works but if you do it from the side it's um, it sort of slides back a little bit. I think the answer is definitely probably not on the T14 Gen 2 because you can see it lifting up. So you can see the beautiful ports or two of them on the Mac. One of them is uh, typically used for um, charging so you will need a dock. The ThinkPad on the other hand it mirrors those two ports and um, one of them can be a dock. Additionally it has two USB-A ports, one on each side. Then you can see a HDMI 2 port, a headphone jack and a micro SD card. It's not a full size SD but um, it would do. On this side we also have the Ethernet and lock slot smart card reader which is optional. On the back you have the 4G so you can potentially have the 4G option. Personally, there's probably two trains of thought. One is that having the variety of ports is really helpful. The other train of thought is that you might as well connect everything into a dock, into a USB-C on this. It, whichever way you prefer, useful to have this potentially. Okay, so on the inside you have webcams. A little bit better on the Mac. No privacy shutter on the Mac, and I think they've suggested don't put anything in between the webcams because I think sometimes it damages the glass. Not sure how that works. On this one, you have a privacy shutter. The webcam on the ThinkPad probably is best described as it works. On most laptops, I think generally it just works better if you have an external camera if you need to do the higher quality zoom calls. Out of the box, um, the T14 Gen 2 would have more display options. The display can also be a little bit more easily replaced, so that's Potentially helpful um, if you drop the laptop and the display gets damaged on the Mac. Whereas on the ThinkPad, I think you just remove the bezel and uh, replace a screen. So that's something. It's not a serviceable part, but it can be more easily replaced. On the inside, I think um, you have the speakers on the Mac, which is um, better. Um, and the trackpad is just delightful to use um, on the Mac. On the ThinkPad, the trackpad works. Um, but I think the strength is really the keyboard. And if you just tap the key it just feels brilliant and on this one it it feels like a Mac but thankfully it's not um, it's no longer the butterfly keyboard okay on the on the inside fingerprint sensor a power button um, whereas I think that's the um, power button with the touch ID oh in oh the keyboard on the thinkpad it's just much more enjoyable and um, the trackpad works um, don't really use the track point much myself but some people very much Love it. On the Mac, um, you get a superb experience on the trackpad. As you can see, it's um, the size difference is actually quite, um, you know, it's a more generous trackpad. And also um, lengthwise, it's um, a little bit longer because the ThinkPad has to accommodate the physical buttons, um, whereas a Mac is just oh, one large glass surface. Very nice. Again, it goes back to what you prefer. Some people really can't work without buttons. So what I do is as soon as I get to a desk, I just plug in an external keyboard and the Logitech MX mouse, and that just doesn't get used. So battery life, when we run our medium workload, it was about four and a half hours versus just under 10 on the air. Uh, YouTube um, 1080p plus some um, five web tabs refreshing every 30 seconds. So it's um, battery is just insane on this. Obviously on this laptop, you have vents um, so that's another thing um, we'll notice next there is a fan inside whereas um, you know the apple m1 it just it's insane in that it doesn't have a fan so it has a little bit less sustained performance um, because it throttles back but um, obviously there's that to uh, i think ltt um hack where you can put a thermal layer between the uh, heatsink and base cover 
not sure what to think of that, but um, you can um, use a base cover as a large heatsink. So yeah, this is distinctively Mac. With a quiet and funless design, I think it's just beautiful. You stop noticing it, um, and after a while, when you go back to a PC, you remember, oh, there's that thing. So yeah, it's, it's really, definitely really different. Starting with the T14 Gen 1, you get a good boost to the Gen 2. When you go from Gen 2 to the Air, you also get another lift, which is quite helpful. When you go from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2, it narrows the gap to the Air. Again, you can see how superlative the Air is. Both the T14 Gen 1 and Gen 2 are running single-channel memory. So if you run two-channel memory, I suspect the Gen 2 would um, get closer to the Geekbench score of the M1. As it stands, the M1 is fast. So in the Cinebench R23 single core, you can see that the T14 Gen 2 is reasonably close to the Air and ahead of the Gen 1. In the multi-core, the T14 Gen 2 also gets closer to the Air than the T14 Gen 1. However, the Air is quite fast, as you can see. Just trying to say this with a straight face. Um, so the Gen 2 is closer to the Air than the Gen 1, as you can see on the graph. However, the M1 is um, on a class of its own. Speedometer, I think this is one of the optimization targets um, for Apple, so that's why in the web test it's quite insane. However, if you think of the uh, improvement going from the T480 to to T14 Gen 1 and T14 Gen 2, it's actually very, very noticeable. So it's good that Intel has made very noticeable steps. On the air, during stressing, the heat is reasonably well spread across the system. It doesn't have a cool spot nor a specific hot spot, as you can see here. Whereas with the ThinkPad, um, you distinctively get some areas where the heat exhausts from the system. And um, across the board, some parts are cooler, but it um, seems that you get hot spots. 10 minutes into the Cinebench run, we're just going to show you the AC power usage. So you can see on the right hand side, that's a ThinkPad. It's doubling the consumption of the Mac while getting a little bit less performance. However, it's probably more a demonstration of how superlative that the M1 chip is rather than the ThinkPad um, being different. The ThinkPad makes good generational leap over the previous 10th gen Comet Lake processor. It's just Apple seem to be ahead. So just to summarize a few reasons why the ThinkPad might be um, super useful. You can you can plug in an external GPU into it to speed up your um, rendering. Not portable, is it? But um, you know the capability is there. Um, the CPU core is definitely more um, powerful. Um, at the moment, I think the reading is that um, the eGPU support on that is not really there. It might come later. We don't really know. So if you want eGPU support today, then this is the laptop to get. And also the ThinkPad has a more generous um, display alt capability, so you can alt put to more screens. On the Mac, it's uh, distinctively limited at the moment. Another benefit of getting a ThinkPad, I think as mentioned, is just the more robust design. You can get up to five years warranty on the ThinkPad if you extend. It's built for that life cycle, which is um, reasonably long. With Mac, typically speaking, on the website, you can get up to three years warranty. It's not a reflection on the quality, it's just if you want longer warranty, it probably has to be a, through an insurance company or through a third party, somebody else. Another benefit with the ThinkPad is that it, it doesn't feel cold, any of the casing, so it feels um, quite nice to touch the first thing you get to it in the morning. I think we've, um, we're at what, um, 14 degrees at the moment in this room. If I touch it quite quickly, you get a sense that metallic cold metal feel and um, also no more um, Intel space heaters inside. So just to wrap it up with the ThinkPad, the user service for parts is um, more generous. So you can change the RAM, uh, get it up to 40 or 48 gigabytes. M2 is a standard size M2, so you can upgrade the storage more cheaply. On the Mac, you hit a <laughs> bump in the price. So top five reason why the Mac is more ideal. Number one is that this display out of the box, it's some um, stunning. So it's some P3 coverage and the color just looks really vibrant. Not quite as bright as the MacBook Pro, but it's just excellent. So when you look at it, the color vibrance and the contrast, it just looks great. Obviously on the ThinkPad, you can get the more expensive 4K panel, but that's not a standard panel. The Dolby Vision 4K screen with 100% Dolby RGB coverage, um, that's a 
not a cheap upgrade. It does affect the battery life, the Full HD panels. They're also good. You can have either 45 or 72% color gamut. They're both decent, it's just as a base option, the Mac just covers it with one option that is decent. Obviously it's glossy, so keep that in mind. Another reason why the Mac might be more ideal for you is that um, the design is just so thin and light, it's excellent. I mean, that even applies to the chargers, but just look at the difference in the power brick size. It's um, 30 watts versus 65. Uh, benefit three is um, if you're into one-handed opening, it's, um, yeah, it's just... Number four, it's um, if you like your quiet, uh, then the fanless design will be something that's just really useful for you. And I think in this case, I think M1 chip, it's just, it doesn't take a genius to work out in some workload. It just smokes everything else. So it's um, both power efficient and powerful. So that um, fanless design also helps it to be quite unique in the sense that on the Intel side to do fanless, you have to probably have one of those low power chip and it's just not fast on Mac. It's, you get the performance and the quiet. And um, lastly, when hardware wise, it's just, you know, the speakers are a little bit better than the ThinkPad. Hope this uh, gives you a better sense of what the comparison is like. If we set the price aside, the T14 Gen 2 is probably better compared with the Apple MacBook Pro um, M1 rather than the Air, because price-wise, they'll be a little bit more similar. You can load up a Pro with a 16 gig of RAM and get quite close price-wise. Likewise, you can say that perhaps the Air is better compared to the X1 Nano, but the Nano is um, far more expensive. In either cases, it's um, really impressive how the Apple has done on the pricing. Both systems are built for their respective OS, and then Mac is just um, that um, software hardware integration with Mac. This one is, um, you get frequent um, updates, BIOS updates, runs well on Windows. But yeah, I think um, just to summarize, they're intriguingly different systems. People will probably be <laughs> looking at um, these two options and thinking actually, which one is better for me? So if you're thinking of these two, um, let us know which one you pick. It will be um, really interesting to hear. Please like and subscribe so we can do more of these um, content. Anyway, thanks.